All right, Oceanus, here is the um, presentation for hurricanes, which I will probably start in class and then also will help you with um, your case of Hurricane Katrina. So talk about hurricanes. This is the Gulf. You can see Florida on the right and then parts of Louisiana on the left. So we talk about hurricanes. So basically what a hurricane is by definition, it's a uh, tropical cyclone. Uh, one with sustained one minute winds of at least 74 miles per hour, 64 knots, and elevation of 10 meters. It's derived from the Spanish word huracan, which I'm not saying that right, which is most likely inspired by Hunraken, which was the name of an ancient Mayan storm god, or Huracan, the Quiche god of thunder. So anyways, a little information for you there. I'm going to change my view here. So let's see um, if that makes sense. Okay, so some facts. Um, when we talk about hurricanes, they are, excuse me, they are, uh, again, tropical cyclones, low-pressure areas with sustained winds, right? The strongest hurricane record was Camille, with winds exceeding about 200 miles per hour. That may have changed. Um, typically about 500,000 kilometers in diameter, and then can be associated with heavy rains, tornadoes, storm surges, and also called typhoons and tropical cyclones. So these are some billion-dollar weather disasters from 1988. Um, and again, a lot of them are hurricanes, and we could probably update. This is 12 years old, and I could not find an updated um, um map but you can definitely see a lot of them are hurricanes so katrina the one we're going to focus on had over 1800 deaths about 125 billion in damage and it was the most destructive hurricane in u.s history um again may have to update this we've had a very um active hurricane season this year but this is just showing you new orleans um i had the opportunity to go to new orleans after hurricane katrina i was in the ninth war and it was it was definitely um a sight to see but again this is the this is new orleans as you can see the biggest issue is the storm surge and so there were there have been other um events in 1900 in galveston texas um it, it was probably led to the greatest loss of any loss of life due to any meteorological event with about 8,000 died and problem is 1900 they didn't have not they did not have the ability to predict or at least alert um individuals about um hurricanes and then a very strong typhoon hyena which we called yolanda again this killed about 5,000 people um this hit the philippines and micronesia and then southern china and vietnam but again they usually tend to call them typhoons in the pacific so you can see the size of that all of that energy there and so this is again just showing you the hurricane with the um the way that the uh the rotation patterns and so if we look at a map when we talk about hurricanes we tend to think of hurricanes like in terms of north america uh, we call them hurricanes so off the east coast and hurricanes off the west coast you have typhoon typhoons and cyclones tend to be a southern hemisphere so usually if it's the southern hemisphere, we call them cyclones. And if it's in the northern hemisphere above the equator, we call them typhoons. And so you can see um, that image there. There is a category scale for hurricanes. So it's go cat one through cat five. You can see pressure, uh, wind, storm surge. Storm surge, again, is the big thing. And if you get to a cat four, cat five, you're going to have anywhere from over 10 feet of water. If you get to a cat five, it's, oh, it could be up to eight, greater than um, 18 feet in just a storm surge and again storm surge is the one so structure major features there's an eye which is nearly clear there in the middle you have an eye wall and then you have a spiral rain band so you've got wind you've got water and you've got storm surge and again this is um hurricane there in the gulf you can see florida to the right and then probably parts of louisiana and again this is often what you'll see again the lighter green represents water or rain, excuse me, but then if you start to see the the yellows and the reds again, that kind of talks, that kind of indicates rain bands and, and the amount of rainfall. And so again, here's another one. Again, greens. Once you get into the reds, that's usually as, as that circulation. And so again, um, this is a very powerful storm. I don't remember what this might be. Hurricane Andrew. I'm not sure. Miami Beach. Yeah, it might be Hurricane Andrew. So we look, we've got the eye where you have that air going down, you have outflow air going up, and you just have this spinning. And so surface convergence, spiral rain bands, and as they spin, right, they're picking up energy. And so here, eye slopes outward, and so these are from those planes that fly into them. So in some, much the same way an ice skater spins more quickly as her arms or his arms are tucked close to the body, a hurricane also spins at a faster pace near the center and near the quarter edge. If a hurricane has a really tight, organized wall, eye wall, if it's really organized and it kind of gets smaller and smaller, that's going to be worse because there's going to be a lot more energy. Often when hurricanes become weakened is when, they, when that eye wall starts to disband or become unorganized. 
Again, the destruction is most intense on the right side of the cyclone or right side of the hurricane, wind and storm speed. So if you're looking at the right side, so you've got your left to the right, wherever that spinning is, if it's going towards the right, that's where that's where the impact is going to be. So you can see speed and direction of hurricane movement as it spins to the right there. That's where most of your damage is. So eye wall replacement, a shrinking eye indicates storm intensification gets smaller and smaller. And so some intense hurricanes will actually develop double eye walls as rain bands contract and intensify. And then what happens with eye wall replacement leads to weakening of hurricanes followed by renewed strength. So eye walls real tight, expands, and it contracts again. So it's going to it's going to get stronger. So sometimes you hear about these hurricanes like Oh, it started out as a cat one and now it's strengthening into a cat two or cat three. It's because that eye wall, right, as it gets closer, especially when they get into the Gulf of Mexico and they pick up warm water, that's usually an issue. Because a lot of times these are coming across the Atlantic where the water may be cooler and then once you get closer to, um, like, into the Gulf. So this is just kind of showing you um, uh, from April 12th. This is showing you April 13th. But you can see the intensity where it's a real small eye wall and as it gets larger and larger, that the eye. So the greatest damage and loss of life from hurricane is near the coast associated with a storm surge. And so storm surges, so here's your normal high tide, there's your mean sea level, there's a storm surge. And so you can see there's the normal high tide, that storm surge may be several. So it could be 10 feet above normal high tide or 18 feet or 20 feet above a normal high tide. So if you think about hurricanes, we talked about tides, high tides in, now add another 18 to 20 feet on top of that, especially if you're talking about a cat five. Normal high tide, here's a category one, it's a four foot, category three and a cat five, 20 foot. So you can see why these coastal areas. And so this is before Hurricane Iva, September 2004 in coastal Alabama. So if you look at the arrows, Right, you can see we've got lots of wind damage, but you can see where that beach has pretty much been obliterated. You do have that one house that's kind of standing there, and then you can see the the indication. But you can also see that storm surge, how it went up to that back parking lot because there's a, a, a major, some of those structures are gone. So again, you've got wind and water damage there. So here's before hurricane, after hurricane, it completely obliterates um, everything in its path. And so that's just kind of giving you a quick overview of hurricanes. Again, if we had more time, uh, we would go over it. But again, we're getting uh, the uh, crash course version. So hopefully this will help. We'll talk about this in class. But this is me signing off from Room 102. Have a great rest of your day. And I will post this as soon as it's done processing. And I'll talk to you later.